welcome. Uh, yeah, I will give your talk, a uh, short talk about uh, yeah, how open is open power. Uh, because uh, yeah, the world is more interesting when uh, there is not only one uh, computer architecture. Uh, I am Dan Horak, uh, working uh, in the multi arch team at Red Hat. Uh, our primary goal is uh, to keep uh, ideally all uh, or keep or achieve parity with, uh, between all architectures for all products uh, we support or provide in Red Hat. And definitely one of the important uh, ones is uh, yeah, the upstream project for the, uh, for the enterprise distribution, uh, which is Fedora. That's uh, my primary job. Uh, I take care about uh, yeah, the IBM architectures, uh, power, and mainframe. And uh, the goal of this talk is uh, to at least show a bit about uh, how open uh, a high performance uh, architecture uh, could be. Because there were some changes in the past uh, months or and years, and uh, things are more interesting, as uh, I would say, than compared to the, the previous state. So here is a picture. Uh, that uh, somehow describes and shows uh, the history of the power, power PC, open power architectures. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, pretty yeah, complicated. Uh, there was a branch uh, where uh, the server-side hardware was developed. It's a power base, uh, power line. Uh, there is also the power PC line that was more uh, oriented uh, towards uh, the embedded system or consumer systems. And there were lots of uh, yeah, barges, diverges, and stuff like that. Uh, at the end, uh, it now ends uh, with the Power ISA 3.0 architecture, which is uh, well, it's, uh, yeah, here at the end, which is the uh, latest one. As you can see, a really complex story. So there were uh, some attempts uh, to improve that. Uh, first uh, was uh, starting uh, the Power.org organization, which uh, happened in uh, 2004. Uh, it was uh, really some, some way how to attract more uh, organizations uh, to join uh, the development and start cooperating, but it was uh, nothing uh, in the really open sense. It was still uh, some, let's say, private organization for its members. Things change uh, a lot uh, with the introduction of the Open Power Foundation that started in 2013 with IBM, Google, Nvidia, Milanox, Stein, and maybe some other companies. Uh, and uh, they started uh, yeah, this organization really to promote uh, the power architecture across uh, yeah, more businesses, uh, more workloads, and also I think uh, one of the ideas was to cooperate uh, on the uh, business that IBM got uh, to build the supercomputers for the US government. Uh, big change, well, during the years, definitely more and more organization joins, uh, also individuals can join. So really, there are now, I think, maybe 300 uh, organizations, uh, and definitely roughly about, yeah. 50 individuals uh, that joined the, the foundation. Uh, what happened last year? It was uh, really the, one of the other major steps. Uh, it was uh, yeah, on the organizational side, uh, it was joining uh, the Linux Foundation to really better uh, cooperate with uh, the whole Linux ecosystem. It was yeah, the administrative part uh, and uh, the technical part was uh, opening uh, the the architecture itself uh, to the community, so anyone can now take uh, yeah, the instruction set and do their own implementation without worrying about any patents and stuff like that. So yeah, really, it was uh, I would say anticipated by some of the members uh, through some rumors uh, in the previous months, uh, and uh, I believe that it's a logical step how uh, such architecture can be developed uh, more and quite more open and uh, yeah, in, in this sense. Uh, 
now going more to, to some details uh, for the, on the hardware side. Uh, the designs are uh, not open, but uh, yeah, the foundation uh, provides some reference designs uh, where the members of the foundation can use them, improve them, change them, uh, modify them for yeah, their purposes. So that's uh, yeah, not open, but uh, if you are a customer of uh, the Raptor Computing Systems company that uh, offers the Talos and Blackbird systems, uh, you will get uh, the full schematics at least for for the whole system, which is uh, handy. If uh, well, it was handy in the early days, so where there were some bugs in the documentation, so it was easy uh, way how to check uh, whether yeah, some pinouts uh, in the documentation really correspond what's uh, in, the, in the schematics and uh, also it's uh, useful when yeah, there is some damage on the board and uh, you can find what uh, components uh, should be on the place that are missing and it's possible to repair the hardware. Uh, other open piece uh, in the Raptor computing system designs is uh, FPGA that's used for power sequencing uh, uh, yeah, there's a power supply, so how the power supply is uh, providing the power to the system. Uh, it's controlled by FPGA. Uh, it's a uh, yeah, small FPGA, but it's uh, the source code for the stream is available and also the whole. Uh, it's using uh, the FPGA that uh, uh, can be programmed using the fully open tool chain. So anyone interested in hardware design, there is one example. And uh, with the hardware, if you buy an uh, open power system, you will get, uh, in fact, two computers. So one is used uh, for the management part. Uh, usually, uh, it's using uh, some 32-bit ARM system. And then you get the yeah, real power base system. Uh, so both of these uh, computers uh, need some firmware. So for the management, uh, called PMC, uh, it's uh, <coughs> I think mostly using uh, the OpenBMC project, uh, but also there are some open power based hardware designs uh, that are using some proprietary uh, BMC. So, really, the vendor can combine what they think is the best. Uh, also, there is a project called uh, Bank BMC, uh, which is uh, not a replacement for OpenBMC, but it uh, provides uh, sufficient functionality to bring up. Uh, Again, the Raptor-based systems uh, to the working state. Yeah, and on the other side, with the enterprise IBM hardware, they don't use uh, the BMC now, but I think they are planning to switch to, to yeah, using something like BMC uh, with the newer generations. Uh, yeah, so now we will come to the firmware for the main power computer. There is some schema. Uh, some boxes, uh, items uh, that describe the steps uh, for the initialization of the main system, not only the CPU, but uh, yeah, the whole system. And uh, yeah, as we will see in, on the next slide, all of that is uh, available on, on GitHub. So it really starts uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, yeah, the power on action, uh, which is initiated by the BMC but then it uh, jumps to, uh, to the main power CPU, uh, which is uh, yeah, not only the CPU itself that you then use uh, for yeah, running uh, your operating systems and applications, but it also contains a bunch of uh, smaller embedded controllers. Uh, and uh, the firmware for all of them is, uh, is uh, all open and uh, yeah, developed in, well. Partially, I think, uh, internally to IBM, but uh, uh, it's uh, all on GitHub and uh, it accepts uh, yeah, contributions from, from the community. So first, uh, after powering on, there is a so-called uh, self-booting engine, which is one of the small uh, support uh, controllers. Uh, it runs through some steps. Uh, I think its uh, primary task is to initialize uh, yeah, a single core. Once it's, uh, this part is done, it uh, starts uh, another piece of hardware, uh, of the firmware, which is called host boot. It initializes uh, yeah, all the cores, uh, the memory. So 
more pieces uh, on the systems are working now. At the end, uh, host boot uh, starts or loads uh, another piece of firmware, which is uh, providing uh, the runtime services, uh, thus also uh, the initialization of uh, uh, the PCI Express of system, and uh, it loads uh, uh, a Linux mini distribution that serves as the yeah, last piece of the firmware. Uh, it contains the bootloader, and then you can you can uh, load uh, your operating system. So all of that, as I mentioned, is uh, all on GitHub, so it's uh, yeah, possible to inspect, uh, build yourself, uh, yeah, modify, and so on. So there are some of the uh, components listed. Uh, I mentioned uh, SB, Hostboot, uh, Skiboot is, uh, is the runtime services layer, uh, Petitboot is the bootloader, uh, it's uh, KXEC based, so uh, yeah, it's uh, booting from Linux to some other Linux or some other system uh, based or it's part of the Linux dis mini distribution uh, called, called Skewed. Uh, OCC is one of the small uh, controllers on the big chip. Uh, this one serves uh, for thermal management, uh, frequency scaling and stuff like that. OPO build, OP build is a uh, yeah, uh, project uh, that contains all of that and uh, it's the way how you will build your own uh, image of, of the firmware. It would be nice if all the vendors uh, that are building uh, the open power base systems would use uh, uh, or would merge their own branches for X uh, into the GitHub upstream. Uh, it's slowly happening for the Raptor based systems, so other companies uh, or some other are already doing that uh, themselves. Uh, I think yeah, with some other ones, it's uh, I would say more difficult uh, to get uh, yeah, their changes uh, to the upstream, but in, in general, uh, you have all that available. And naturally, uh, if you want an open system, it would be nice to have some open operating system or distribution. So definitely, various uh, Linux distros, uh, BSDs are there, and when it should uh, be really usable distribution and it would be nice if it uh, yeah, there would be very minimal delta uh, to the mainstream or uh, other architectures like like, uh, like the x86 so for Fedora I did some comparison and uh, we are now missing only uh, 630 something uh, binary RPMs uh, out of uh, yeah, almost uh, yeah, 100,000 binary RPMs, which means that we are over 99% uh, complete compared to, uh, to x86, and uh, definitely some important part of the missing stuff is really architecture specific, so it makes no sense to yeah, have it available, but yeah, it's difficult to figure out just uh, by comparing uh, the RPM repositories. Uh, now, Microvot, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's an interesting topic uh, that uh, uh, relates closely uh, to opening uh, the whole architecture uh, in August last year. It's uh, Softcore that's uh, written in VHDL. It implements a subset of uh, uh, the instruction set. It uh, cannot do a floating point yet, uh, vector instructions. Uh, so it's uh, missing the supervisor state, so you cannot run Linux kernel, but it's all uh, in some stages of development, so uh, we can look forward to yeah, some future improvements. Uh, it can be uh, simulated using the JDL uh, toolchain or synthesized for PGAs. Uh, yeah, the synthesization part uh, used to be or for, uh, it depends on what uh, FPGA, on what FPGAs you would use for Xilinx, uh, it uh, relies on, on the proprietary, proprietary tools, uh, but for uh, some of the lattice uh, FPGAs. Since uh, I think Tuesday it's possible to use a completely open toolchain from the source code uh, to the FPGA stream, it's, uh, yeah, it's the last link 
uh, on the on the slide that so announces uh, this change. So, yeah, again, available on GitHub uh, gets uh, contributions from from various members in the community. Uh, yeah, so time for some short demo. Uh, so it's recorded, so I, I'm not doing it now. So you check out from from GitHub uh, the sources, uh, and if you have the GHDL to chain uh, available, it will now yeah, compile it into the simulated model. At the end, there is a binary that can run some, uh, let's say, memory <coughs> images. Uh, what's uh, available with the with the sources uh, is, uh, for example, MicroPython. I'm using here yeah, the pre-built one because uh, first it's uh, fresh enough, and uh, also uh, the cross-compiler two chain that we have in Fedora is, uh, yeah, doesn't have uh, the C library. So it's not possible to uh, build uh, yeah, to build a MicroPython binary because it relies on some C library stuff. So it's in fact it's much easier to develop uh, these things on power-based machine uh, with some yeah, Fedora or Indian <coughs> power architecture, where you are just using uh, yeah, the native toolchain and uh, it works out of the box. So because it's just the user space part. And with some yeah, switches like disabling uh, yeah, the hard fault point and vector instructions, you just use the regular GCC and yeah, things work. Yeah, so we are some yeah, demo running, so it can compute, uh, it can print the health, and uh, yeah, with the latest development or some recent development on, on the uh, MicroPython side, uh, it also allows you to do a reset. So when pressing Control D, it uh, yeah, restarts the CPU. And uh, because in memory it's, uh, it's, uh, it's the MicroPython, it uh, restarts the MicroPython. So. It's here. Yeah, it's the uh, restart part. Think it's the end of the simulated demo, and because uh, yeah, I have here one of the supported FPJ boards, it's, uh, it's a silent one, so I had to use uh, the, uh, the proprietary tool chain, but uh, yeah, it's, it's here, so <laughs> you can then see, and uh, yeah. It's live demo now, so it's running the soft core in the, in the FPGA. Yeah, it's much faster than the simulation, as one would expect. <laughs> so that's it, and uh, there are some other pieces uh, that IBM, under the Open Power Foundation umbrella, uh, opened. And it's uh, the open copy interface, uh, which is uh, yeah, the open coherent acceler accelerator processor interface. So it's a high speed coherent bus uh, primarily used for attaching various accelerators, like uh, yeah, the GPU based ones. So uh, it's used in the supercomputers uh, to yeah, speed up uh, yeah, the computation, but also can attach uh, various FPGA solutions, cards. Uh, so this. Uh, uh, through this interface, and based on uh, the open copy interface, uh, there is a new development and really new uh, method how you can attach uh, memory to a CPU, uh, now called open memory interface OMI, which will switch from the traditional parallel memory bus uh, to a serial uh, based one, and uh, it will use uh, with under in the uh, lower layer uh, the open copy interface. There are some previous versions uh, of the of the copy coherent uh, interface, uh, and uh, yeah, 
get the copy two. It's using PCI Express uh, for the physical and clean player. Again, use uh, it's used for attaching accelerators and uh, again on GitHub there is a repository uh, with some yeah, source code how can various uh, PGA cards be attached uh, through this through this interface. So really, there is lots of open in the open power world. So, what's next? Uh, when we are uh, taking part on various conferences, uh, IBM and Open Power Foundation is always asking the bigger community uh, what to do next, uh, what uh, else uh, would be interesting for the community to be opened, so whether it should be some real course, uh, some verification or development tools, uh, yeah, maybe thanks to some development uh, on the open power uh, on the open side, there might be some open power based laptop in yeah, maybe five years, maybe. Depends whether there will be someone who will be interested in that and would see some business in, in that. So if there is anyone uh, who would like uh, yeah, something to be open because yeah, something from some ac academical uh, reasons uh, would like to inspect uh, yeah, how something is being done, please talk to IBM Open Power Foundation and uh, let them know if they really are interested in all this feedback because uh, it makes no sense to just uh, dump some yeah, tons of uh, VHDL code uh, implementing something if no one would be interested uh, in yeah, doing it with, with it. So yeah, really it's uh, useful to have some reason why it should be, should be opened do something more with that, really do follow some development on, on that part, uh, not just, yeah, here it is and forget it. So that's all from my side, some brief overview and it's uh, time for uh, questions and hopefully answers, so, okay. Well, it's a, a different architecture, so uh, having a heterogeneous environment is uh, useful in, in general because it allows to discover bugs in, in software projects uh, that are not visible in some other architectures. We have some examples of that, really. We're finding some real bugs in real applications that just because of some yeah, <laughs> good luck we're crashing on, for example, Intel. And uh, yeah, it's also uh, really high performance architecture, especially with all these, uh, or with these uh, coherent, uh, coherent interfaces uh, that yeah, allows to share uh, the memory. So it's something to ex at least to explore. It's, Google has some yeah, internal development uh, or some internal systems, so I don't think you can easily buy them. But uh, I think they even made them, the designs uh, also publicly available on, on GitHub, some Barrel I, Zayus server sets, I think, all on GitHub, including, I think the schematics is there, even the mechanical drawings and stuff like that. So. Is there any, you want to buy like, Sorry? Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's possible to contact, for example, us, uh, and because there are some barriers, uh, well, the question is uh, whether it's a uh, possibility to get some open power or power-based virtual machine for doing some development work. Yes, it's, it's possible there are open power hubs uh, across uh, various locations. One is here in Brno, and you can ask uh, yeah, the team to get uh, either a virtual machine or even a physical machine. And regarding the hubs, there is also some idea having some uh, hardware-based or more hardware-focused uh, lab where various vendors would put their hardware and uh, yeah, it's allowing the community to do some development, testing, debugging, for example. Not only on the basic power hardware, but like uh, uh, NIC cards, uh, network cards, uh, uh, stuff 
Yeah, these some drivers. 